Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the selective color adjustment layer in Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. My pump it dance, whatever that is. Okay, so the selective color adjustment layer inside Photoshop is massively powerful and I think is the best, probably, adjustment layer in Lightroom, in Photoshop for doing so many different things. Now, just to make it clear, I'm not gonna turn a whole image black and white and then have an element of it in color. That's not what this is used for, that's an effect that you can do with it, but this is so much more powerful and it's used by professionals all over the world to create stunning, stunning effects. So this is part of my photography training course. If you wanna get this image so you can practice along with me, or if you wanna download all the other tutorials and all the other project files, just head over to photosincolor.com and you can download them all from there. The link is in the description. Here we go, let's jump into Photoshop and have a look. So today we're gonna to be using this image that I shot here in Vegas a few months ago of Josh Strickland um, in Dre's nightclub actually. It's right on top of the strip. So if you want to find the selective color, it's over here inside the adjustment layers, okay? So you can click on that and it's gonna load it up. You can also select it from the little circle down here and you can find its selective color is the bottom one. And if you don't see any of these, you just go window and um, open up adjustments like that. And that's it, really, really simple. So when we're in, here we go, this is what it is. You're probably gonna open up and it's gonna look something like this. So let's have a look at what this actually does. So for example, you're working within a color range and you can change the different colors within that. Let me show you what that means. So anything which has red in it, inside this image, I can boost the cyan or reduce the cyan, simple. Or I can boost magenta, lose the magenta. Boost the yellow, lose the yellow. Really, really simple. That's essentially what this does, but it, there is loads more power in here because you've got your different colors. So for example, yellows. Let's have a look at his jacket. We can boost the magentas, reduce the magentas, and it's only using whatever is inside the yellows. And I can boost the yellows, reduce the yellows. So you can see, really effective. Now, the, the black essentially makes it lighter or darker, so you can use that for different things as well. Um, but the darker does kind of make it look a little bit gray, which I don't love, and then the other way brightens things. So it does work with the luminosity as well. Okay, so you've got all of your colors, but you also have whites, neutrals, and blacks, and this is where things get so powerful. So essentially, you can create different effects. So anything in the highlights, so now it's ignoring color, it's just gonna go anything which is in your whites or highlights, you can add cyan or take cyan out of it. You can add yellow or take yellow out of it. And then you can do the same thing for the blacks or shadows, so you can see how powerful this is just as I walk around the image. So I've ruined it, but you can see the elements that you could do. So for example, on this image, I might want to go for the blacks, and for this one, I'm going to reduce the cyans and boost, sorry, reduce the yellows and boost the cyans like this. And then in the highlights, I'm gonna do the exact opposite, like so, essentially like a cross process inside the image and then inside the neutrals, I can just move things around here. I'm gonna lift the magentas a hair and I'm gonna get rid of the cyan, just one. So now look at the before and the after, I've added this beautiful cross-processed image, but it looks absolutely amazing. And it hasn't ruined it, it hasn't actually ruined elements of the image. It's still really beautiful and really sharp, and you can just see how wonderful this looks. So let's reset and let's see some other things that you can do with this. So for example, inside the skin tones, this is so powerful, skin tones live inside red. And I can actually change, see I can change his skin tone just a little bit. And this is how you can move things around by adding a little bit of magenta and pulling out the cyan a little bit. Now let's look at the before and the after. You see I've warmed him up just a little tiny bit. 
And what I've done is, um, and, and that's gonna make it look really natural, essentially. Now, if you wanna reduce the saturation of his skin, watch, I can make his skin go really light and porcelain in effect. And that's used in a lot of different advertisements and things. Or I can really darken down his skin and make him look really tanned. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless somebody has tanned skin already. But that's essentially what you can do there. So massively powerful. And there's the different colors. Now, a few of the things that I want to point out here that this could be useful for. And that comes up here. If you were to select this, this is how you make a layer mask. Now, for example, within this, if we were to go for color range, and then let's go in here and let's click on his shirt, okay? So we'll boost the fuzziness up, and you can try this yourself, because you'll have the image if you've downloaded it. Okay, and let's plus on this. I'm gonna pull the fuzziness down, making sure I'm gonna get all of the image. Pretty happy with that right now. Yes, I've included bits of his face, but I really don't mind about that. I can actually get rid of his face by clicking on it and get rid of his shoes. So now I pretty much have selected, there you go, his jacket. Pretty much, it's not perfect. But now when I hit OK, now what I can do is come into this, and now whatever I'm affecting, let's go to yellows, watch this. I can now change the color of his jacket only. So for example, I could make it like this and now I've matched his shoes by using selective color and creating this layer mask just by using in here the color range. Now, I can feather it a little bit just to make those edges smoother and I can even change the density of that layer mask. But the important thing here is I've been able to very quickly go in and change the color of his jacket which is massively powerful. So let's change the color here. This is a good project to attempt to do. We're gonna make it kind of this bright orange color, like so. In fact, no, let's switch this up. Let's make it bright yellow like this, and that looks really, really great. And now let's go in, let's create another layer, and this time we're gonna go in for the blues. Okay, the cyans even. And now what we're gonna do, if you watch what we're able to manipulate here, is it's gonna completely change what's happening inside the sky. So we can change the darkness of the sky and we can add in and move yellows and things like that. So now let's leave it at this. Now let's look at the before and the after. By holding Option and clicking the background layer, you can see I've changed the sky and his jacket on two separate layers entirely. And now I can go in, let's change his skin tone by adding another one of these on top. And we're gonna go into the reds. And for this one, we're gonna pull him back here and we're gonna darken his skin just a little bit. I really like what's happening in here. That looks really great. So you can see how powerful this is. And then let's just add one more and then we're gonna do that cross process effect. So essentially, we're just gonna give it this way. In fact, we'll go really a lot more extreme this time. Like so, like so. And now we've completely got this really amazing, vibrant image, and we've completely changed the color of it using only the selective color tool. Okay, so let's look at the before and the after. Just using that one tool, massively powerful. So that there is how to use the selective color adjustment layer inside Photoshop and how powerful it really is. It's amazing. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel. Remember, if you wanna practice along with me using these files, you can get them all over on photosyncolor.com. The link is in the description. And that's it. This was Ed Gregory for photosyncolor.com. Theme tune. Yeah.